The Western Cape is disputing that increase. They say their increases over a seven-day rolling average are just over 13.6%. Well, let's try and clear this up. I'm joined now by Professor Salim Abdul Karim, co-director of the COVID Ministerial Advisory Council, also, of course, director of the Center for the AIDS Program of Research in South Africa. Prof, always great to talk to you. So I'm hoping that this is not a case of lies, damn lies, and statistics, and you can clear it up for us. Just to give you a bit of information, uh, what the Western Cape Health Department is saying is that they looked at new cases um, in the week of October 19 uh, versus the previous week, uh, and that is 1,757 cases as opposed to 1,546 cases, and that's an increase of 13.65%. Who's right, the Health Minister or the Western Cape Health Department? Good evening, Sally, and good evening to all of the viewers. I think both of them are right because they're looking at it quite differently. Uh, if you look at what's the actual factual situation, regardless of you know, the differing perspectives and the way in which they're doing their calculations, put very simply that South Africa, since the 1st of October, has seen a slow and steady increase in the overall number of cases nationally. But if one uh, disaggregates that, there are three provinces that are responsible for that increase. The other provinces are not contributing to that increase. And the, the three provinces that contribute most to that increase are number one, the free state. The free state has more cases per day than the Western Cape. The second is the Western Cape, and the third is the Northern Cape. Now, the Western Cape is the one that's being discussed here because it's showing the fastest increase in the number of cases of all of these three provinces that are contributing overall. So what that means is that we now have to be particularly vigilant, and we're going to have to re-emphasize the need for protection and prevention in these three provinces if we want to mm. bring back that trend down to normal. I hear you, but nevertheless there's a problem here because if the Western Cape saying their infections are 13.65% up, but the health minister saying it's 42%, that is a massive discrepancy. And it does call into question what's the point of data if, depending on how you assess it, uh, you get completely different results. I mean, yes, both agree that it's cause for concern, but a 42% rise is a much bigger concern than a 13.6% rise. And that's, that's why I'm asking for clarity, because we, we put so much stock on these numbers, mm -hmm. and when there's this sort of disparity, we go, well, what's actually going on? Yeah, so I, you know, I don't know the specifics of how each of them have calculated their numbers. But However, the, the fundamental I, I, issue. I understand that, but, but you certainly have to keep an eye on the numbers. So you would be yeah. better placed than me, for sure, to say whether it's closer to a 42% or a 13% increase in the Western Cape. So which is it? Yeah, so it depends on what period you're looking at. And if you're looking at, I, so I look at it as a seven-day rolling average. Which is so what the, the Western Cape did. At, yeah, that's yeah, what the so Western Cape did. I look at it, it's a seven-day rolling average. And when I look at the seven-day rolling average, it was steadily coming down until the 1st of October. And then on the 1st of October, it turned and it's going up. It's going up quite sharply. I don't know whether it's 13% or 40% because I need to actually do the calculations to tell you that. But... It is a cause of concern. That much is clear. Um, but you're not going to tell me whether it's closer to the higher or the lower, are you? Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm happy to do the calculation and tell you. I just okay. don't have it at hand. All right, okay. I suppose, um, bearing in mind that you have to keep an eye on things, are you... How alarmed are you about the Western Cape? Let's put it that way. And I'll tell you why. Because when, when we first heard that numbers were spiking in the Western Cape with the first wave, the Western Cape was quite defensive, and they said, we're not a hot spot, we're just doing more tests. And I think I want to try and eliminate any of that from this equation. Yeah, so when we look at the, the, the overall trends, I prefer to look at it 
uh, more holistically than just the number of cases. So if you look at the number of cases in the Western Cape, the number of cases have been going up steadily over the last three weeks. But if one looks at the admissions, and this, is, this comes from the sentinel surveillance that's done, there is no uh, clear increase in the number of admissions. So we're not, that's not translating into admissions just yet. Uh, if, it, if, the, if there is that increase in cases, they're not yet going to the hospital to the extent that it shows up in that surveillance. Then I look at the proportion of tests that are positive. And over the three weeks that we've seen this increase, the proportion of tests that are positive have remained within a narrow band of between 8% and 8.3%. And as long as that number is below 10% and on its way down, then we are in a position that's not alarming, but a position that could turn because of the increase in the three provinces. So I hope I've given you a sense that when you look at the overall picture, mm. it's not alarming, but it is, there is a matter of concern that there is a trend in which it could turn and become an yeah. alarming situation. I, I, yeah, that, I, I do understand what you're saying. I, I want to ask you a little bit about the new travel list. It came out less countries on the banned list uh, from 60 down to 22. Still many of our best markets are banned for leisure travel. Do you agree with the Tourism Business Council and others who say we should simply drop this list and just ask people to have a COVID test less than 72 hours before they arrive in this country and then if they're negative, let them in? So I think when we look at the situation, we've got to recognize that there will be a certain proportion of individuals who will come in during the incubation period. And when you're in the incubation period, which lasts for anything from two to five days, you will test negative. But then you could become a major source of spread. Now, we would eliminate or reduce that risk when we're taking individuals from countries where the virus is not spreading to any significant extent. But the moment we have a situation where the virus is spreading rapidly, as is occurring in many countries right now, then we increase the probability of such an individual who is incubating the virus and will then bring it back into our country. So one has to take a balanced approach. I think fundamentally we have to accept we are in the midst of an epidemic. That if, if we just want to go back to normal, then we have to understand that there's a risk that goes with that. So the question now has to be, is that risk sufficiently low that we can take that risk? And that's something that needs to be assessed in relation to where we are in the epidemic, what's our overall situation, and what's the risk of a new introduction? So because we are at a low level of transmission, the, the, the risk of a, a super spreading event triggering a second wave in our country is reasonable. So one has to be very careful about how we're dealing with the epidemic still at this stage. Now that's true. I think we all just want it to be over, but it ain't that way. Thank you very much, Professor Salim Abdul Karim co-director of the COVID-19 Ministerial Advisory Council, also director of the Centre for the AIDS Programme of Research in South Africa.